let's go on to the skull-based dissection, okay? So first of all, what I want to do is to cut the middle turbinate on both sides. So I'm going to dissect the middle turbinate. So when you cut the middle turbinate, you don't dissect the entire turbinate out. You keep the posterior attachment intact. Yeah? So the blood supply to the middle turbinate is intact. So this becomes a middle turbinate flap. So now we have a middle turbinate flap as well as a fadat flap. And now we have a nice view of the, please elevator, of the sphenoid now. So, yeah, please elevator. so what I'm going to do next is now dissect and expose the sphenoid keel on both sides. So here is the sphenoid keel on the right side that's been exposed, as you can see here. And I'm going to do the same on the opposite side as well. So this gives us the view of the sphenoid keel, and that's the opening of the sphenoid ostia on the opposite side here. So one of you can actually do a basic fascia if you want later, yeah? So I'm just going to cut across this another septal flap, please elevator. And then let's raise this flap as well. Now you have a double septal flap for the construction. Now, to raise a septal flap in a cadaver is always difficult because the plane is gone. It's much easier to do this in, a, in somebody who's alive, yeah? To get the mucopelichondral plane in a cadaver is not so easy. And now, okay. So now, I'm exposing it to the keel all the way here. Can you see? Same way. Okay now. So instead of using scissors, we're going to use a true cutting instrument, the head and neck scissors, which is fine. You just have to <laughs> use whatever is given to you, yeah? Life is not about instruments. Life is about making do with whatever you were given, yeah? Okay, so now I'm just going to cut the flap inferiorly and the flap superiorly. So that gives us now the flap that has been raised all the way back. I need to cut a little bit more. Okay. Okay, good. So now the flap has been raised all the way down. Okay. The next step what you want to do is you want to remove the cartilage and the septum in between. Okay? See this again? Yeah. So this will give us so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna cut and remove the cartilage and the septum. So this can be used for reconstruction. Blixley. Okay. So that is look at this, the septum that has been removed, and we can use it for reconstruction if required. Yeah. So preserve as much structure as another septum that I'm going to remove. So now we have double nostril exposure. I can use both nostril now. Can you hold? So now you see the keel is exposed, right? So on this side. I've preserved everything. Your turbinates are intact. Your uncinate, bulla, everything is intact, okay? So, so let me remove the keel. So you can remove the keel as long as, for septoplasty, yeah. as long as you preserve this superior strut there, this of bone there, eh? this bone. As long as you preserve the superior bone and you preserve the anterior so bone here, so once you've exposed, this is the keel of the sphenoid. Looks like the, of the, looks like the ship, no? Can you punch? So follow <coughs> and open the keel Kleenex for me. And the same way, this goes down. So you, you want to bite all the way down on both sides. So once you have done that, you have exposed both sides. Hold the head up. Huh? So quite often, you can actually just break like that. Okay? But you can only do that after you have done enough osteotomies on both sides. Okay. So now we are inside the sphenoid sinus. 
if we have a good spin out sinus, then the dissection will be easy. If we have a spin out sinus that's not so pneumatized, then it won't be so easy. But either way, we will always manage, okay? So now I'm going to push all the structures away. Remember, on this side, we didn't, we didn't do fast at all. Turbinates, everything is intact. So you do not have to damage anything on the right side. You can just easily push everything away. I'm just going to expose. All I need is to see the OCR. Can you see? Yes, yes. I can already see the OCR already. Yes. So now I'm going to go a little bit laterally. So again, you can see how we've preserved everything else. We have preserved everything else in the this side, yeah? So I'm going to remove the mucosa from here. I'm going to remove the, the upper part of the planum. So the planum is exposed here. Now you can see that we are into the sphenoid sinus itself. So what is important is you want to make sure that the planum is exposed as well. Okay. Yeah, here the one above the salah. I'll, I'll show you shortly. Yeah. So from the anterior wall of the sphenoid sinus downwards, that's the optical cavitical recess on the right side and cortical recess on the left side. So, so this is optic. Optic. So this is not a, a classical sphenoid sinus. Yeah, sphenoid uh, sinus simply because you have septa here, septa here, and a septa here. So it's a bit more difficult, which is good. You see difficult dissection, then yours will be much easier as well. So the landmarks, optic, another optic is here, under the bone. Carotid artery, carotid artery. A, a big septa in the midline, a septa here. So what I'm I need to do is to remove all the septas so that we are able to have normal anatomy in the spinal sinus itself. So you will have multiple variations of spinal sinus. Don't get confused. Make your enemies your friend. Your enemies are op carotid artery, carotid artery. Optic nerve, optic nerve. That's your landmark. Look at how abnormal this keel is. So I can't see the clivers yet. While waiting for the suction to come, let me expose a bit more. So I'm going to remove as much bone as I can, because so that we are able to visualize clivers. Yeah? I can see the paraclival carotid already on, on site, yeah? So I need to get a bit more exposure. And we have an abnormal sphenoid anatomy here, as you can see. Don't worry. Once you've identified your friend's optical carotid recess, we can now continue with the dissection. Okay, there you go. So now I'm going to look at this abnormal anatomy we have here. Can you see, guys? So this is not normal, yeah? So, so the best way would be to drill this. The only problem with drilling is, yeah, the only problem with drilling is you will destroy the, the view because you have bone dust everywhere, yeah? Let me remove as much as I can. Bang, bang. Okay, so you see? Can you see how effective a chisel is, guys? Can you see a chisel is as effective as a drill if you place it properly? Bang, 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 bang. Okay. So this is, if you don't have a drill, this is what you do. I can see the floor of the clivers already. There you go. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this. So I'm going to now uh, drill a little bit. No, no, you, know, you, you don't need water. You don't need water. No, no. So this is a DCR drill. This is burr. But you can actually use a little bit to... to all, all I need is to make a little bit of an opening in the dura so that the dura is exposed. That's all I need to do. Then I use kerosene punch, yeah. So this is what I would do in back home as well, yeah?
So this is platinum up to here. Optic nerve, optic nerve, carotid artery, carotid artery. Planum is from here to here. The bulge here, that is cella. Okay? Paracolival carotid, paracolival carotid. So transcolival is going to be difficult here because the space is one, two, and a half. Can you see how small the space is? Cubicle is this one here. Again, planum from the anterior wall of the sphenoid sinus, where it's sloping down to here. This is horizontal, cubicle. This is cella, the bulge. This is clivus. This is V2. Okay, maybe I go this side. Yeah? So, remember Foleman Watandam? Yeah? Foleman Watandam is here? That's V2, here. Can you see Foleman Watandam here? Correct? Can you see the nerves going here? So I'm going to bang and expose the foramen a bit more. Can we? Yeah, back. Okay. Back. There you go. You just need to chisel at the right spots. Okay. You just need to see how they carve the color by the. You get the idea of how to use a chisel. See. So if you chisel at the right place, everything opens like a book. Slowly, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And one more. I'm removing the telecoid, the Michael's cave. Bang. Bang. Okay. See? Bang. Bang. Okay, good. So you see now, we are opening up the board along the Michael's cave, yeah? Bang. The present punch now? There. So this is the Foleman Watanda V2. This is V1. Stick knife again? So this is V2. Foleman Watanda. This is the maxillary strut. And above the maxillary strut is your inferior orbital fissure. There. And that's where your V2 goes in. The V1 goes in. So V1, V2, and V3 was here. So now, let's open cella first. Okay. I'm just going to open the pituitary now, yeah? Okay. Bang, bang. No, no, I, I did just now. Okay. Bang, bang. Okay, and bang. Okay, beautiful. So even now, Ricky and I still do this sometimes. Just to open up a little bit of the particular. Can you make a ball probe? Ball probe. Yeah. So all I need is to open up a little bit of the dura. Okay. And then, so even when we use drill, we do not drill the whole thing. We'll just use a little bit to expose the dura. And they see whether we can just lift out this bone piece or not. Yeah. So fresh cadaver. Blakesley? So do that entire dissection like how you would do a surgery, okay? One is stuck. No, it's there. Yeah. 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 Now I'm going to use a nice kerosene. Okay. So I think Bibu has bought yeah. a bigger punch, bigger. and it's much easier to do this. So now the dura is almost always stuck in a cadaver, so it's quite difficult to maintain dura during dissection. If you can't find, if you cannot, it's okay. So that's the layer of dura. Can you see? So go between the dura and the bone there. It takes time. It, you, know, you get uh, bone dust everywhere. So if money is not the issue, please use the drill. If money is the issue, 
use Burr only to expose Jira and then use Garrison Punch. I come from a country where money is important. So learn to use whatever you have. Don't fight against and hope for what you don't have. Just manage with whatever we have, like what we are doing now. Okay. So now I'm going to go. Optic nerve is going to come into view now, guys. So now I'm going to go and open the optical cavity of the size. Then we will go. R3 is going to be exposed. Can you see? Yeah. So this is always more controlled than using a drill. So most of the injuries to carotid artery. Which part of the carotid still comes here? Siphon. The carotid siphon. So most of the injury to the carotid arteries are by drills. Yeah. So let's expose all the dura before we open it up. Okay, guys. I'll go through the entire again, planum and whatever not. After I open all the dura, carotid artery exposed. Clear, guys. Can you imagine drilling over this? Yeah. And not only that, your bone dust everywhere, no? And you won't be able to appreciate the anatomy as what we are doing now. Yeah. But for clivers, drill is very important. There you go. Cavernous sinus coming into view on the opposite side. Now I'm going to the cavernous sinus region. That's cavernous sinus coming into view. Okay? And I'll expose all the anatomy after this for you guys. So you see, we are doing the entire dissection with one what is this again? Spinoid punch. punch yeah. yes. Indian made spinoid punch. And it's a hard bone, yeah, it's not a normal bone. So now I'm going to go laterally. There you go. Bang. In line, what should you use? Uh, Chisel. Yeah. I only use the, du the drill to expose a bit of the dewer. And uh, what size uh, did you use? The, the, the chisel? Yes. I don't know, whatever the girls gave me. Is it our typical chisel? Is it? Well, it works quite well. Huh. Like I said, you just have to make do with whatever you have, no? I think it's loose, no? Yeah. And your chisel's a bit short, that's the only problem. Yeah. Bang. Gently, gently. There, that's where the archway is. Okay. Now I think we I can just carry some punch now. I think it's loose. Looks loose. Maybe here, yeah? Be careful huh, when you bang. Just bang gently. Bang, bang. Okay. Should be loose unless it's stuck inside. Hold the head, yeah? yeah. There you go. RT exposed. That is the optical cavity is There, guys. Can you see, guys? I want to get make sure we have enough exposure before I open the dura, yeah? So we've op opened the cavernous sinus on both sides, exposed the cavernous sinus on both sides. I want to make sure that we have exposure to Meckelscape. Yeah, so this is not an easy sphenoid there, yeah, guys. Thick bone, orbital apex. Okay. Now let's go up and expose planum a little bit more. There. So this is the easiest part, planum. The only part with planum is it's a sloping bone. The bone is sloping, you see? So it becomes a little bit more difficult. But you see how, with a nice Kaisen punch, you can expose it very nicely here. There, planum, exposed. Guys, can you see? Okay, Lexley, I think I'll stop here and then go through the anatomy first, then we'll open the clivers, okay?
Okay, so this is planum. From the anterior wall of the sphenoid sinus, where it is sloping, it's planum. The horizontal, the vertical part is tubercle. The bulge is cella. Down here is clivus. Okay? Optical cavertical recess. Can you see? Very nicely exposed here. Okay? Same way, optical cavertical recess here. Okay? The junction between the pituitary glands and the cavernous si and the si siphon here. These are the all ligaments here. Here is the foramen. Rotundum. Can you see guys? So this is where your Meckel's cave would be. There you go. Bang, bang. I'm just following the canal along V2, guys. Can you see? Bang. Okay. Flip. See, guys? So I can do color by the statues as well. Huh? Did you see? There you go. That's your Meckel's cave, guys. So here, let's see, color. This is your V2, correct? Yes. Foramen rotundum. Can you see? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I've exposed the nerve along the foramen rotundum here. Okay? Follow it back. Mm -hmm. This is V2. This is V1. Remember I was telling you? In f above foramen rotundum, you will have the maxillary strut. Okay? V2. Rotundum. Maxillary strut, okay. this is your orbital fissure. Mm -hmm. So this is V1. V1, V1, V2, and your V3 would be down here. If I remove this, your V3 will be... Okay, now we're going to go to Clivus. I don't want to open the, the dura until everything's exposed. So I want you to have a view of the anatomy with the dura intact, then I'll expose everything for you. Is to make a hole inside and expose the dura. There's no point in showing things with what they don't have. Yep, that's true. Then I'm almost true. Can you see? That's the plexus of the clivus there. You, you don't have a short, longer chisel. Okay, bang. Bang. Okay, there I'm true, guys. Can you see? Okay, so this is what I do in real life as well. I use the drill the bird to thin the bone, bang. Then I use a crescent punch. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Bang. Bang. Okay. So now we will do a trans okay? Okay, can someone hold the head for me? So you drill until the dura is exposed and then use the kerosene punch and you can remove hold the head guys. The head is moving. Head is moving. I'm also moving. What happens to the bone there? Otherwise, if you don't have drill, you won't be able to do skull base. That's wrong. There's a dura, guys. Can you see? So this is what I would I do in real life as well. I will use a drill to expose a bit of the dura. The rest, I will use a kaizen punch. Oh, the tumors in the transclival? The tumors in the in in this region? Mostly chordomas. Mm. Chordomas and meningiomas. The only difference is, during surgery, we would do a 3 millimeter kerosen punch that is 45 degrees. In now, yeah. now we are using a sphenoid punch. But you see, the job gets done, no? Yeah. So just use whatever you have there. Go until you expose the palak level. There, can you see guys? There's a palak level artery being Exposed. You 
Yeah, exactly. So now I'm going to open. So don't get me wrong, I'm not saying don't use drill. Use drill when you really have to. Yeah. But be, be versatile, that's the right word. You must be able to manage with whatever you have. Be versatile, yeah? Life doesn't give you everything you want. Yes. Especially if you operate outside your comfort zone, you have to be versatile. Much better. Okay, guys, let's look at the skull base. Planum. From the anterior sphenoid all the way here, when it's sloping, that's planum. Tubercle, the vertical aspect. Cella, the bulge, like my stomach as I grow older and older. Okay? Paraclival carotid, paraclival carotid, clivus. You can go all the way down, drill all the way down, depending on how far you need to go for the surgery. Optic nerve right, optic nerve left, carotid siphon right, carotid siphon left. Optical carotid recess, optical carotid recess, and this will be where your macros cave, your cavernous sinus will be behind this. Okay? If you look here, it'll be much easier. I've already exposed for you the V2. Mm -hmm. That's V2 exposed. Very nicely, foramen rotundum there. Yeah. Okay. This is the maxillary strut, mm -hmm. and here would be your V1, orbital fissure. Okay. The same way, here down here will be the V2. Okay. Now, we do pituitary surgery first. So if you have a t oh sorry, V3. Yeah. If you have tumor in the pituitary gland, you first of all open the dura. Open the dura. Here, Blakesley. Okay. Then you take a biopsy. Like that, okay? Biopsy given to the scrub nurse. Suction. Now, if it's a microadenoma, and the, by using an IGS, you just remove the microadenoma and preserve the rest of the gland. There, can you see? The rest of the gland is normal. The, the pinkish color there, that's normal. This, okay, that's microadenoma. By a macroadenoma where everything is tumor, you use the suction and curette and remove the entire tumor until you're able to see the back there. That's diaphragma cella. Can you see? The white structure falling there? Yeah, until you see the diaphragma cella. There? The, see the transparent dual like material at the back there? Diaphragma cella. There. Diaphragma cella. Okay? Okay. If you have a CSF leak during surgery, you take a little bit of fat and you pluck the leak. <laughs> so now I'm going to dissect the pituitary gland. Let's see whether we are able to identify the, the junction between the pituitary gland and the carotid artery. Okay, that's the junction. Can you see? So if you are, ah, that is a superior hypofacial artery. Here, guys, can you see? Yeah, there. The same way here. This is your superior hypofacial artery there. The one that's coming from the ICA. That's the artery here. These are the suspensory ligaments, and this is beautiful. That's the inferior hypofacial artery. This one here. Can you see? This one, this one. It comes from the, the, from the carotid artery. Yeah? Let's see whether we are able to identify here or not. There you go. This is where the inferior hypofacial artery would be. Here. Okay? And the suspensory ligaments. Okay. So if you want to do a pituitary translocation, cauterize the inferior hypofacial artery, cut the suspensory ligament, cauterize the artery, cut the suspensory ligaments, preserve the superior hypofacial artery, and then lift up the entire pituitary gland. Okay? Lift up the gland. And that gives you the view to the posterior clinoid. Can you see, guys? Okay. Can you punch again? So the, this posterior clinoid mm -hmm. is the upper part of the clivus. Yes. Just use whatever you have. Say a prayer, it always works. <laughs> there you go. When you do this, 
you have to make sure that you don't accidentally break here. The upper part here is where the carotid artery, there's a ring around the carotid artery. So don't touch the lateral aspect here. Okay, there. Leave the upper part, because the, the upper part is where the carotid, there's a ring around the carotid artery. So if you avulse it, the carotid artery gets torn. But the rest, you can remove. See how effective is Professor Bibu's spheroid punch? Yeah. So that was pituitary. I'm going to put the pituitary back down to where it belongs. Okay. Can you see, guys? Pituitary is back to where it belongs. Now we are going to open up tubercle. That's tubercle. Okay? So when you open up tubercle, you, you see the optic nerve. And I'm going to open up the planum as well. That's the frontal lobe coming into view. So this is planum, tubercle, cella. The same way, I'm going to follow the optic nerve and dissect it all the way to what we have done yesterday. Come again, sorry? Yeah. That's the ophthalmic artery, guys. Can you see? Yeah. Down here. The ophthalmic artery here. So this is exactly like what we cut yesterday. See how much of perineal sheet you have along the optic nerve. So it's very difficult to injure the optic nerve. See, you have to dis injure all this to injure this. Can you see? Ophthalmic artery. The same way now. I'm going to cut across this one now. Optic nerve coming into view. I'm going to cut the entire perineal sheet. And that's the optic nerve coming into view here. All the way. Remember, on the right side, we have not touched the adenoids, turbinates are all intact. You, but you have enough exposure to do all this skull based surgery, you know? Yeah. Ophthalmic artery. Guys, can you see? Yeah. That's the carotid artery, and that's the origin of the ophthalmic artery. Beautifully seen. Yeah. Okay, guys, can you see that? The same way. This is the carotid artery. And that's the origin of the ophthalmic artery. Carotid artery, ophthalmic artery coming out from there. Okay? This is the arachnoid. So if I remove this arachnoid here, we should be able to look at the pituitary stalk. Okay, there you go. Pituitary stalk. Can you see? There's a pituitary stalk there. The stalk comes from, there's a right optic, left optic, optic chiasma, and there's a pituitary stalk here. Okay, guys? The same way, if I open the arachnoid al s along the frontal lobe, that's the ACA. There. Can you see the anterior cerebral arteries? There. There. So here is the right ACA, left ACA, and intercommunicating. Can you see it forms a H there? Right, left, intercommunicating. Okay? Suction? It's clear on the screen, guys. I'm going to suck out all the CSF life, as I can see. So again, can you see we preserve as much structure as possible? Again, you can see the ACS very clearly here. Huh? There. Right and left ACA. Guys, clear, right? Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly dissect these tissues here. And if you are lucky, we'll be able to see the basilar artery through this. This is the membrane of Lilliquist here, down here. And this is the one that separates the pituitary, the pituitary area from the lower part here. And when I dissect this, yes, the basilar artery. Okay, can you see, guys? That's the basilar artery. Okay. And here, Basilar artery, posterior cerebral, superior cerebellar, there's a third cranial nerve there. So this is the mammillary bodies, hypothalamus. So if we go here, we will be able to see the third ventricle. Okay. Now, which I'll show you later, okay? Now, surgery done. Can you cut for me a bigger piece here? How do you reconstruct? Remember I told you the dissection must be done like how you do a surgery, okay? Then only it becomes like a flight simulator when you, like how the pilots do. So what I'm going to do now, tumor has been removed, time to go home, 
I put a piece of fat or facial lata, but I usually use fat. Push it into the edges. Okay? And then I'm going to put the dula back. Can you see, guys? Yes. The dula that I opened just now. Mm -hmm. So let's do this as well, yeah? So the last few years, I've been teaching my courses like this. Teach you all how to, reconst teach how to reconstruct as well. Push the dula back. Can you see? Yes. And the dula from the top, you push it back here. Mm -hmm. And the dula from here, you push it back there as well. Okay. Now, once the dula is all placed back, Okay, nice? Yes. Tissue glue. And where is our septal flap? Our septal flap, Hadad's flap. Oh, that's the Hadad flap, it's down here. It's yeah, that's the Venus yeah. So that's a septal flap, goes and covers the whole area. So this is the keratid, keratid exposed here. Can you see, guys? Mm -hmm. There? Mm -hmm. That's the paraclival keratid. Mm -hmm. It comes from here. Mm -hmm. And then it forms a siphon here. Okay, yes. Okay, come and see, guys. I'll, I'll open for you. I'm going to cut the dua so they can see the entire keratid. Yes. There you go. Okay, guys? There. Can actually see from there and from down like so I may as well as do the six... Cavernous sinus. So here now, you can see the paraclival keratid mm -hmm. coming up from the horizontal portion in the petrous apex, vertical portion. This is the siphon itself. Now we are inside the cavernous sinus. Can you see a big nerve running across there? Let's open the cavernous sinus first, yeah, to be sure what nerve that is. I'm going to open the cavernous sinus. Just go lateral. Okay. Okay. Anybody wants to guess what is this nerve? The guy that's free floating here, six. six. Yeah. Big, right? I'm so surprised. It's very big. This is six because it's free floating. Can you see? Yeah. That this is six. That's a lateral wall of cavernous sinus. This is six. And they come from, be from behind the carotid artery to the intracranial. That will be your dermolus canal. I'll show you afterwards. Okay? That is six. And if we dissect here, the big guy, he's three. Huh? The big fat guy is always the third nerve. God made him supply all the nerves except for superior oblique and lateral rectus. There's a third nerve. Okay? So sometimes if you are lucky, ah, there's a fourth nerve. Mm -hmm. Small. Fourth For the superior oblique, right? Mm -hmm. LR6SO4, correct? Yes. That's how I remember it. Okay? Yeah. Three, four, mm -hmm. six, mm -hmm. V1, V1, and V2 down here. One going into the orbital fissure, and V2 down here coming here. Wait, let me open the V2 for you one shot. Okay, guys, there. Can you see V2? Okay. From coming from the cavernous sinus, V2, V1, V1, and V2 here. Six cranial nerves. So this is your cavernous sinus. Okay? We will do the same on the opposite side because the Michael scape is exposed there. Yes. Now, I'm going to open the clivus. Push it back. Let's open the clivus. Okay, when you open the clivus, if everything goes well, you will see Mr. B. So in India, Mr. B is Amitabh Bachchan. In skull base, Mr. B is basal artery. There you go. Can you see, guys? So, can you see the punch? Now I'm going to push this up again. And I'm going to remove the arachnoids from the do the dissections layer by layer, yeah? Gently, like how you do a surgery, yeah? Okay. Basal artery, guys. Can you see? The same way now, I'm going to dissect a little bit more 
of the arachnoid tissues. That's the basilar artery. That's the mammillary body. And if you open this, sometimes if you are lucky, you can see the third ventricle. That's the third ventricle. Suction. Third ventricle. Third ventricle. Suction. There, guys. Choroid plexus, third ventricle. Third ventricle opening up. Can you see? Let's see whether I can expose the choroid plexus or not. There, that's choroid plexus down there. There, guys. Aqueduct, choroid plexus, and aqueduct of Sylvius down here. Okay, there, choroid plexus, beautiful. Down here is aqueduct of Sylvius, there, fourth ventricle. That's the interpeduncular system. The, the, the interpeduncular system. You see the CSF is just pouring out. Okay. So we will leave this cadaver uh, intact so that you can come and reference to this cadaver whenever you want to. Yeah. You just have to pay Bimbo, Madam, and I some money for every time you use to see. Okay. How much shall we charge, Bimbo? Okay, guys. Okay, now. Casein punch. Casein punch. So now I'm going to go laterally, guys. So I'm going to go laterally now, so that we can see more structures. Now, remember when you go laterally, be careful because you're coming close to the carotid artery, right? Yeah, I'm coming close to the carotid artery. And it's very easy to accidentally damage the sixth nerve here, because it comes very, very, very close to that side as well. Uh, that's why uh, uh, I'm removing the bone so that you can see all the other nerves. So all depends on whether the brain is is edematous or not? I'm going to open. That's the carotid artery. Can you see? The paraclaval carotid is here. Carotid siphon. I'm going to push it across. And hopefully, we can see the sixth nerve. All depends on the position. I have to remove this arachnoid membrane now. So some of you will have cadavers where the brain has completely shrunk. That will be the best ones to see the nerves. But before that, posterior cerebral, superior cerebral, this is the third nerve, yeah? This is the third nerve. Okay. Suction. Yeah, okay. You see, the, there's not much space between the dura and the brain stem. Can you see? So that's why you're not seeing the nerves very clearly. But one of you, I'm sure, will have a brain that is fallen back. That will give a very nice space for us to see. Ah, I think this side's better. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this to dissect all the dura away. The arachnoid tissue away. And hopefully, that's six, guys. Can you see six? At 7 o'clock. Okay, so this is much better. Yeah, this is much better. Six nerve. The, who is the big fat guy here? Who is the biggest nerve? That's the fifth nerve. No, no, I think, no, 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 no. no. That should be seven and eight. I think fifth is high up. Let me just see, let me see. Yeah, fifth is high up. We'll use the 45 degrees later. That's the fourth nerve. Which one is fourth? There, that's Let's small. Say. Yeah, it's very difficult to see fourth, but we, we're very lucky today. The big one is five. five. Lower down is seven and eight. Okay, now I'm going to use a 45 degree scope, okay? Oh, beautiful, guys. Can you see, guys? This is beautiful. If you want to take a picture, you take this picture. Is recording? Yeah. You can take it and put it in your WhatsApp profile if you want. This is a nice picture. Six, Six. Five. five, seven and eight complex, and four. Four, five, 
Okay. Seven and eight. Can you see the IAM there? Take his picture as well. The upper one is five. The lower one is seven and eight complex. There. At two o'clock. The, the, the closest one is six. So this is six, five, seven and eight complex here. Okay? So if I look down, you will find the jugular foramen with multiple rootlets down there. Okay, wait. now I need to angle my scope. Hold on, guys, hold on. So now we are looking down. So, so let me, let's go one more time, yeah? Six. Okay. Up there is four. That's five, seven, eight complex. And lower down here will be nine, ten complex. You can't see. Yeah, because there's too much sun. But you can see the vertebral artery. Can you see? Yeah, yeah, you see? The vertebral artery forming the basilar artery on this side. There. That is the left vertebral artery. Okay, okay guys? Okay, now, how do we reconstruct this? Back to zero degree scope. So you use a piece of fat, put it here, put the duvas back, and put the septal flap on top of this. Okay, guys? So come again? Okay, basilar artery, posterior cerebral. Superior cerebellar, uh -huh. third cranial nerve. Okay? Now we're going to go in. Sixth cranial nerve. Fourth cranial nerve. Fifth cranial nerve. The big one. Okay. I'm going to go in now. Seven and eight. So, so now you can see the six close by. Seven and eight and IAM. Okay, you can take this picture if you want. Six. Oh, down there, that's a 9 and 10. Nine and ten yeah. So is that 7 and 8? This is 5, IAM. Below here, uh -huh. at 4 o'clock, is your ni 9 and 10, multiple rootlets of 11. Yes. Going to juggler for the man. Okay? 4, uh -huh. five, 5, 6 outside here. Uh -huh. So 4, 5, five six, 6, 7 and 8. And look at the IAM. And down there is the multiple rootlets of 11, 9, 10, 11. Just juggler for a moment. Yeah. There you can see that. Wait, wait. Yeah. Down here. Can you see that? Let me see. I can touch yeah. that now. Yeah. Now, can you see the multiple rootlets? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's 11 going into the juggler for the moment there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? Was that slow enough? Okay. So here is the paraclival carotid. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is the carotid artery coming from the paraclival. So this is the vertical, uh, the vertical portion. Horizontal portion will be behind this. In the petrous apex, okay? Paraclival carotid coming up. Yes. It forms the carotid siphon as well as the cavernous portion. So this is the cavernous portion of the IC, of the carotid artery, okay? Then this, so paraclival, that is the vertical portion. The cavernous portion, the clinoid portion where it enters the bone here. Remember, I left the bone there just now. Goes to a ring. Remember there was, a, there was a bone I removed just now? Yes. The paraclinoid? Mm -hmm. the, the bone that I, I used the to remove? Uh -huh. I left a small piece of bone on top here. Uh -huh. So it's paraclival, paraclival. carotid siphon, siphon, the cavernous portion here, cavernous and upper, upper here there's a piece of bone uh -huh. that was behind the pituitary gland uh -huh. just now. Uh -huh. That is the clinoid portion. Uh -huh. After that, it becomes intracranial. So this is the carotid artery here. Now it's intracranial. Once it, uh, this is the bone. Better? This is the bone. Can you see? Okay. Yes, correct. So this is the paraclival vertical, the carotid siphon, cavernous portion, clinoid. There. This is the clinoid portion. Remember the bone I left behind intentionally? This bone. This is where it forms a ring. And then from here. It enters intracranial. Okay, so now we go to Michael's cave, yeah, guys. So now, remember V two, correct? V2, yes. So if you lift up, follow the V two backwards. So if I pull, pull this, can you see it's moving? Uh -huh. So, for the man rotundum that we exposed just now, yes. median nerve is here. Yes. You follow the V two back. 
That is the maxillary strut. So this is the orbital fissure where V1 goes in. You push, pull this up. Can you see this whole thing is moving? This is microscale. So I'm going to open the dura of the microscale. Okay? And you can already see V1 coming into view. There. Yeah. That's V1 going into... Can you guys see that? V1 going into the orbital fissure. Uh -huh. And lower down here will be V2. So if I lift up this whole thing here, this is your microscale. There. This gap here is your microscale. Okay, the same way now, if we open up here, lateral to the cavity of the artery. Okay, now we're opening cavernous sinus again. Now this is a very nice one because you can see the sixth nerve. Can you see the six? The big one here is the third. So. Hold on, hold on. Fourth will be very small, so we need to open a little bit more. So I'm pushing the carotid artery away. Okay, now. Three. Four. This, this, I think, is six. It's not, v, it's not V1. V1 is at the back. Uh, V1 is at the back. Because six is uh, hanging, can you see? Yeah. So this is six. V1 is at the back here. That's V1. Okay. Now we do transcribiform. Okay. Frontal, that, the draft 2B that we did yesterday. The anterior admodal artery. The posterior admodal artery. And the, what do you call plenum here? Drill? Or so you all you want is to make a little bit. Okay. All I want is to expose the dual. Okay, enough, enough. Next. It doesn't matter where you drill, as long that so that you have a gap in between. You want to leave a little bit of bone to the side so that you can reconstruct. So between the anterior model and posterior model. Yeah. Come, come punch. I know what's the problem. The head is not extended, but it's okay. We'll manage. We always do. There. See, guys? Dua is exposed. Can you see the dua exposed? Yeah. There. Okay. So I've just cauterized the anterior and model artery. Okay. Now I'm going anteriorly. Okay. So the best is to use a proper keratin punch for this, yeah, guys? And the head should be extended. So I'm coming now anteriorly to where I would be. Was that correct? Now I'm going to remove this. So usually, this dura is very, very thin. So now I'm going to remove the bone along the dura. Oh, the anterior limit is up here. After the anterior model artery. The posterior limit is planum. But it all depends on how big your tumor is, no? If your tumor is very small, you don't have to remove everything. So you, you make your tailor make your surgery. Yeah, so you tailor make your surgery according to how so, yeah, no, no, give me a ball. Pull. So, what I want to do, I want to dissect the dura. Ah, there you go. This is what I wanted. I wanted to dissect the dura away a little bit more. There you go, guys. Can you see? Okay, now, because the, the punch is a bit big. Okay, so now we're coming to the posterior edmo. It's there. Okay. Crescent the punch again. Yeah. But it's okay. It'll be faster. <laughs> The bigger is the faster. So now we are going backwards. So I'm going to drill. But this is a DCR drill, no? Yes, Oh, you ordered for Nishi Gupta. 
love this drill. <laughs> oh, see. oh, her drill. Yeah, oh, okay. oh, right. No. Oh. This is the posterior admoids. Yeah. This is where the posterior admoids, where it turns to become the, uh, the sphenoid sinus region. This is the loop of the admoids. Okay, function. There you see now the the view exposed. Guys, can you see? So I'm just going to crack a little bit more. So I'm going to crack this way. Okay, bang. Okay, and back. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna curve now. Oh, hold on. Okay. Okay. Bang. Bang. Okay. I'm gonna curve around posteriorly now. Can you see, guys? Okay. Good. So now we will flick the bone. Okay, cousin punch. See how thick the bone is here? Yeah. Give, give me a small one, the other one. Okay, yeah. yeah. so we've drilled all the way across. And now. See? See how thick the bone is, guys? There you go. So this bone, yeah. there. Okay. Well, so this is the exposure that you require. Okay. So here you can see now the anterior model artery that we have cut just now. Okay. So this is the frontal sinus. This is the orbit to give you orientation there. See, so is the orientation better now? Yes. That's orbit. The anterior model artery has been cut. That's the dura that has been exposed all the way to the front here. Okay? And this is the dua that I've drilled all the way to the planum here. Okay. Now sickle length. So what you want to do is you want you we have cauterized the anterior model artery, cauterized the posterior model artery. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna cut the dura around it completely. Mm. So now so this now shows you the the, the clibiform plate. So here is where your olfaction nerves will be. Along here, this, this upper part of the septum, remember? Yeah? So if I remove this, you will find the olfaction nerve. Function? Please elevator again. So if you dissect here, you will find the coming in you. So this is the olfactory plates. There. Can you see? This is your cribiform plate. And that's your nerve. Can you guys see that? Yeah? So that's a cribiform inside. So all you need to do now is to cut across, cut across here, do the same on both sides. So if we do the same on the right side, as well like how we've done here, you will remove the entire trans cribiform plate. That's the cribiform plate, and those are your nerves. And this is your olfaction, olfactory nerves, guys. Can you see? Yeah. yeah. So this is so you do the same thing on the opposite side. Meet both of them. Go around here and go around here. Here. That's Krista Galli here. Sickle knife again. So that part becomes a bit more difficult. The upper part here. So you need to cut the dura here. And you'll find Krista Galli inside. So this is the olfact olfaction nerve. Krista Galli up there. And if you cut this, the whole thing drops down. 
That's how you do a transcript form. This is the reconstruction of a transcript form. You put a fascia lata across like this and cover the entire defect. And then tissue glue. 